Hello everyone and welcome back to another video on the channel. Today we are going to be talking about a movie that actually doesn't release for another four days and that is going to be of course the Super Mario Brothers movie. Now this is a film that I was very excited for but also cautiously optimistic going in because of some of the casting choices that has been rumbling on Twitter ever since the announcement of this movie and of course it being a very high profile video game adaptation there's going to be a lot of eyes on this one. And so this will be a spoiler review for this movie because I'm really excited to talk about all three references that this movie has to the video game that is adapting and I'm just excited to talk about everything that this movie is about because it makes a lot of changes and makes a lot of bold swings from the video game that I find very fascinating. So let's just jump right into this video. And so what is this movie about? Well, luckily for the dumb members in the audience, this movie starts off with a nice little voiceover to kind of explain the plot to all the little kids out there. And so essentially it says that 65 million years ago, back when the dinosaurs were roaming the earth, the meteor came and hit the earth. But instead of killing all the dinosaurs, no, that'd be too simple. It actually split the world into two different parallel universes that kind of ran side by side throughout all this time of 65 million years, where our world evolved exactly how it is, whereas their world evolved in a way where there's only one city called the Mushroom Kingdom and the rest of the planet is just a desert, I guess, for some reason. And if that all is confusing to you, well, don't worry because we'll never get another voiceover throughout this entire movie to explain anything else because this movie really, really trusts its audience. But before we get to the present day and we get to see Mario and Luigi, well, we get to see these nuns that are taking care of this dinosaur egg, essentially, and this dinosaur egg hatches and out comes a human baby because that's how babies are born. Again, for the dumb kids in the audience who don't know how kids are born, that is how they are born. And this little beginning part also sets up the villain of the movie, which is the King Koopa, Bowser himself. I guess this is going to be the adaptation of Bowser that we're going to get in this movie. No, he's not this giant like dragon dinosaur type creature. He's just a dude. And so now we're finally at present day time. We get to meet Mario and Luigi, played by Bob Hoskins as Mario and John Leguizamo as Luigi, which again, I think a lot of people were a little hesitant on the casting specifically for Mario. But honestly, I think of everything in this film, the chemistry behind these two brothers is probably the only saving grace. And so at this point of the film, we're also going to be introduced to our female lead of this movie, because of course, we're going to have to have a female lead in a movie like this. So we're going to be introduced to the character of Daisy. No, not Princess Peach. That is so iconic from all the video games. No, we're actually going to be introduced to Daisy first, and we're never going to meet Princess Peach throughout the entire movie because she doesn't exist in this world, which is the little twist and the change from the video games that I think all fans are just going to love. And at this point, of course, Daisy's going to have to meet our main characters, Luigi and Mario. And so she's running across the street. She needs to call somebody, and she sees Luigi is on the phone trying to get a plumbing job for Mario and Luigi to go do because, of course, they are plumbers. And that's going to be very helpful in the plot later on. But of course, Luigi's going to see this cute girl and want to give her the phone and let her call first and sees that she needs a ride to go somewhere. So, of course, he's going to offer for them to give her a ride even though their car is literally broken at this moment and it's honestly a little bit kind of creepy how he's asking her to get inside their van with very upbeat and playful music going on in the background which of course that music is going to be very prevalent throughout this entire movie and no it has nothing to do with the actual musical score and the themes from the Mario games whatsoever which of course is a very very bold change but of course it's scored by the great Alan Silvestri so he's going to get a little pass for this movie right? We are also going to, of course, get some backstory for Mario and Luigi because, of course, this movie is called the Super Mario Brothers. We need to have some depth behind these characters. So we actually learned that they're technically not brothers in this movie. They're actually kind of adoptive father and son because Luigi basically says he never knew who his parents were. And Mario kind of found him on the street and kind of adopted him. And he kind of calls him his own mother that raised him all this time. And, Lu and Daisy also has a similar backstory to where she was found by all these nuns and she was in some group homes. So she also doesn't have a family that she knew and loved and was raised by so they kind of have this connection this romance is blossoming behind Luigi and of course Daisy which is a classic couple from the video games and because of all this flirtation Mario is going to help Luigi get a date with Daisy because of that's of course what we're going to do and they go on this double date together with with of course Daisy Luigi Mario and this character called Angelica who is Mario's girlfriend in this movie and not Princess Peach no we can't have Peach in this movie she can't even be mentioned as Peach she is Angelica in this film but of course you know Mario and Angelica go off on their own they're kind of having a flirtatious little drive through the streets and we get to see the two goons that have been following them this entire time Iggy and Spike they follow Mario and Angelica home and they end up kidnapping Angelica thinking that it is Daisy because their only criteria for kidnapping was of course a character with two legs two arms 
and ahead. Luigi decides to give Daisy a walk home, but instead of going home, Daisy has the great idea to go to the dig site where she is searching for the meteor that actually killed the dinosaurs. And once they get down there, all the pipes in this dig site absolutely burst and water is spraying everywhere. But luckily enough, Luigi is a plumber and they have teleportation power. So they teleport all the way to get Mario at his apartment and they teleport all the way back to this dig site. And luckily enough, this place has not flooded by this time because they teleport and they moved very quickly. But of course, we're going to have a scene where Mario and Luigi are working together with their great chemistry to fix these pipes in this dig site. Meanwhile, Iggy and Spike, the two goons that are after Daisy, figure out that they actually got the wrong girl, and so they actually find Daisy for real this time and kidnap her in this dig site and drag her down to this portal into the other world, into the other dimension that we will find out is Mushroom Kingdom. And Mario and Luigi see that she's been taken and they go after the chase and we get our first big reference to the video games. And this is actually one that I was very excited to see because one of my favorite games in all of Mario is Super Mario 64. And you know how they have the paintings where you jump through the paintings to enter a different world. Well, essentially they're on this cliffside and there's this rock across from them and they see an absolutely terrifying image of Daisy's face kind of peeking through this rock. It's truly demonic and terrifying for this kid's movie. But of course, Luigi is going to have this leap of faith where he's thinking, you know what? I'm going to try to jump off this cliff because I really want to die. And it's not the only time I'm going to jump off a high ledge with a leap of faith into a place where I'm definitely going to die if this was normal logic in this world. But of course, it's not normal logic. And Luigi just knows things in this movie that really just make no sense. But he jumps into this wall and it kind of splashes through the wall into the other dimension like the paintings in Mario 64. And of course, the great physical comedy that Bob Hoskins has on display in this movie is very much highlighted in this scene when he tries to jump into this wall. Now this is where the movie really does dive into the very, very video game accurate world and adaptation of the Mushroom Kingdom, which is basically New York City but with a bunch of fungus covering all over it and a bunch of people wearing very outlandish outfits and of course Mario is threatening to murder people in this scene as well, which is very much in character for him. No, you're not gonna kill him, not if I get that place. I'm gonna break every bone in their body. But now that we're actually finally in the Mushroom Kingdom after 30 minutes of this movie, we can finally explore what this movie is truly going to be about and if you saw Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania just last month or if you saw Tron Legacy a few years ago that's basically the plot of this movie and even the visual effects when Mario is falling into this world of Mushroom Kingdom looks very very similar to that of Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania it has very very high production value as that movie also had and with an even weirder connection to the MCU this movie's assistant director is actually the great producer of the Marvel Cinematic Universe being Luis D'Esposito who doesn't get nearly enough credit for those movies even though he's right there alongside Kevin Feige this entire time the entire like 15 year run the MCU has had and he just doesn't get nearly enough credits and of course this being one of his best pieces of work of all time definitely does not get highlighted in his career nearly enough. But let's really dive into the accuracy of the Mushroom Kingdom in this movie because of course it is going to be very, very video game accurate. Like I said, it feels like a Blade Runner version of New York City, but instead of, you know, having it look like New York City, it's just covered in a bunch of fungus because of course that's what the Mushroom Kingdom looks like. It has a bunch of mushrooms and fungus all over the place, which is again, very reminiscent of the Mario video games, but also the Last of Us video game adaptation on HBO because again, that is the production quality this movie is bringing to the Mario Mario universe. There's little dinosaurs running all over the place and we get introduced to our first Goombas in this movie that look so incredibly accurate to the video game. It's almost uncanny. But what is Bowser's evil plan? Well, essentially Daisy's been carrying around this little rock necklace around her neck this entire time that was a chunk of the meteorite. And essentially, if this piece of the meteorite is reconnected to the actual meteorite that is in this world, it's actually going to combine these two parallel universes and merge them all together into one world. And now King Koopa and all of his army can go ahead and take over the human earth which they don't really say exactly what his plan is going to be when he gets to the place where humans are you just know that he really does hate mammals because mammals are the descendants of apes and monkeys and he really doesn't like that because he's a descendant of dinosaurs because he really does definitely look like a t-rex what single cell organism did you evolve from tyrannosaurus rex the lizard king thank you very much Goomba. Meanwhile, Mario and Luigi are still being acclimated to this world of the Mushroom Kingdom, and so they're walking across the street, they run into this old lady who steals that piece of the meteorite on a necklace from Luigi's neck, and she tries to escape, she jumps off this thing, and then she gets hit by a few cards, which is going to be our first big action sequence of the movie. But then, of course, the other lady in this movie named Bertha is also going to show up and also steal this piece of the meteorite, because I don't really know why she stole it, but she does steal it anyway, and she gets away with these really bouncy shoes, which is a really cool visual to see. But of course, 
King Koopa really wants to get his hands on this piece of meteorite to enact his evil plan. So he's going to send his minions to go after Mario and Luigi because he thinks that the plumbers have access to this little meteorite piece, even though it's just stolen from them. But he doesn't know that yet. And so Mario and Luigi run into who we find out later is going to be Toad in this movie. And they are all captured by the King Koopa, all their little goons and all their little minions. And they're brought to this facility where Toad is actually put in this machine and this machine goes over his head and actually de-evolves him to his prior form because he was a character that lived in this world, in the Mushroom Kingdom world. He devolves into a dinosaur type creature and that is actually how the Goombas are made in this world. It's just the regular people are devolved into these dinosaur-like creatures and they are going to be so dumb and their brains are so small that they're going to be very subservient to Bowser's character, or not Bowser, King Koopa is his name in this movie. They're going to be very, very much a follower of King Koopa because their brains are too small to want anything else. But of course the plot can't end here. The movie has to go on for another over an hour at this point, which is God, this movie's way too long. But of course, you know, Mario and Luigi are going to have to escape this situation because they can't be de-evolved already because, of course, the movie has to continue on. And so they escape extremely easily and they get into this place where a bunch of fungus is around and Mario actually sees behind all the fungus a little bob -omb thing, which is the next big Easter egg in this movie, which is just a very, very much a video game accurate representation of a bob -omb. It's very tiny, but still, it's a bob -omb. This is the next big Easter egg that I wanted to talk about in this movie that is probably the most accurate thing in this movie. Mario and Luigi steal a police car and they're able to escape in this really epic car chase and you've seen it in the trailers this is the very epic Mario Kart scene that has been very much advertised all over the place even I work in a movie theater and we get calls all the time trying to ask when the Mario Kart movie comes out no not the Super Mario Brothers movie no they're asking when the Mario Kart movie comes out because this Mario Kart scene in this movie has been very much hyped and I can tell you it lives up to the hype just look at these car designs look at this rainbow road that they're driving down it's just completely glorious and very much not just a, an alley filled with a bunch of you know fungus but what happens every single time you play mario kart especially if you're a bad driver like myself or like mario in this movie well you're going to drive off the edge of the course and in this movie he drives directly off a cliff and he's caught the car is caught by a bunch of fungus and they, it barely saves their lives and luigi is saying like oh we got to trust the fungus this fungus is going to save our lives this fungus has all the answers because apparently luigi can talk to fungus in this movie which will become very very important later on in this movie even though it's never explained why he trusts the fungus so very much maybe it's because of this scene that he trusts the fungus but it becomes very very integral to the plot later on meanwhile king koopa is taking a mud bath with fiona shaw because this is our villain of the movie. But of course, King Koopa can't stay in that mud bath forever, so he's actually going to enact on his plan and try to do something smart for once instead of de-evolving Iggy and Spike because they've been complete morons this entire time and turning them into useless Goombas. He's actually going to evolve them to smarter versions of themselves to see what they do to see if they're going to be any more useful in terms of his character. And so they put him in the machine, they put Spike in the machine, and they evolve him, and now all of a sudden he can do square roots, and he's very smart with numbers and stuff like that. <laughs> Ignatius, do you know what the square root of 26,481 is? What are you talking about? 191. Now Spike and Iggy go off to try to find Mario and Luigi in the desert, but instead of capturing them, they get captured themselves and they get tied up very easily. So clearly that evolution thing does not work whatsoever. But this plan actually backfires immediately against King Koopa because Iggy and Spike are actually able to be convinced by Mario and Luigi to turn against King Koopa and to help them infiltrate this tower to get up to save Princess Daisy. And they turn against King Koopa very easily. Maybe it's because they're smarter now and they can realize that they don't have to be bullied by this guy with a bad haircuts and just like this very miserable and slimy guy all the time they can actually try to go against him and save the world possibly make the world a better place so that really really did backfire against him and so what has daisy been up to this entire time of course she was captured by king koopa and put in the tower under the thumb of him and of course fiona shaw's character and they do the most evil thing they can possibly do to her which is force her to wear an outfit that she doesn't want to wear in a very creepy way because of course that is going to be a classic trope of movies and tv around this time period and so that's exactly exactly what they do and this is also when we get to meet our next character that is straight from the Mario video games and that is of course going to be Yoshi who looks very very good. This animatronic is actually a very great precursor to Jurassic Park which is released a couple months after the release of this movie which is kind of crazy to think about. And we get our obligatory perverted scene where the villain makes the younger female character extremely uncomfortable because again this is a kids movie and we need to have scenes like this in our kids movies. Don't fight it. You know you've always been uncomfortable in the human world, and you've at least suspected that you were different. 
But before Mario and Luigi can go to the tower to try to save Daisy, they need to get their hands on that meteorite piece on that necklace, which of course Bertha stole earlier in the movie. So they go to this nightclub to try to steal it back from Bertha. And we get a very uncomfortable scene in this kid's movie with Mario trying to seduce essentially this necklace off of Bertha's neck. And it's it's a very uncomfortable scene. Of course, they're going to get their escape and Bertha's actually going to help them, even though she punched Mario in the face earlier in the scene and they were kind of against each other, but now they're helping each other. And then they kiss awkwardly and it's just... It's very back and forth with allegiances in this movie, which is also exemplified in Fiona Shaw's character, which actually gets the, her hands on the little shard of this meteorite, and she takes it for herself, and she tries to do something later on in the movie, which is against King Koopa's, you know, own logic, so... Again, allegiances in this movie don't really mean anything. And so now we're an hour into this movie, which has honestly felt like four hours at this point, but either way, we get our first good joke in this movie, which you can see here. These pipes have been service for years. Must have been a non-union job. And this is honestly the best part of the movie because Mario and Luigi finally get their video game accurate costumes, which look at these glorious costumes. They're finally in red and green, which we've been dying to see throughout this entire movie. And of course, when you have movies like this, when they finally get their costume upgrade, they're going to be unbeatable at this point. So Mario and Luigi get on this elevator to be able to go up to the top of the tower to save Daisy, but a couple Goombas get onto this elevator with them. And so they're hiding behind these massive Goombas because they're small enough to hide behind these Goombas. And a bunch more Goombas start getting on onto this elevator and they don't know what to do i was thinking as an audience member this is going to be like the the winter soldier scene in captain america where he beats up all these different people in this elevator and it's like one of the greatest scenes in cinema history so i was waiting for that to happen but then music starts playing on the elevator and luigi starts to sway with the goombas and they all start dancing And so once Mario and Luigi are finally able to get off of this elevator and they're able to meet up with Daisy who earlier escaped from the Goombas with the help of Toad who was also turned into a Goomba but he has a harmonica for some reason and it was caught on fire in a very, very gory scene for this kid's movie. But she's able to escape and they meet up with Mario and Luigi and she decides to show Mario and Luigi her father which is, I don't know how to describe it, so I'm just going to show you. At least he was my father. He used to be the leader here until Koopa turned him into all this... Fungus. Oh, oh, it's an honor to meet you, sir, and a pleasure. They get separated once more, and they're all trying to do different things. At this point, this plot is so messy that it's, it's quite hard to remember exactly what was happening at this point in the movie. But this is where we get to our next ledge scene, where Luigi's on this ledge, and he needs to jump from one side to the other. And again, he has a death witch in this movie, and he is also very high on mushrooms, probably, because he keeps on wanting to talk to the fungus, and he thinks that the, the fungus is actually a connection to Daisy's dad, and the dad is trying to connect and try to communicate through the fungus to Luigi because plot elements but he thinks that this fungus is telling him to jump and to have a leap of faith so he jumps again because of his death wish and he starts flying for some reason honestly i think i missed a line of dialogue to say exactly why he starts flying because mario decides to jump and he doesn't decide to start flying and he just falls nearly to his death and he jumps and bounces on the fungus until they're able to you know hold hands and, and luigi's able to throw him to the other ledge and this is just one of the most exciting sequences in the entire movie that makes absolutely perfect sense. And this is where we get our next big reference to the video game, which of course is going to be on this wall. There's going to be something that says Thwomp on it. And if you didn't know, the Thwomp is actually a creature in the Mario video games that is this big rock creature and it's just a sign on the wall. So it's a nice little Easter egg to the fans who really know the video games and know the lore of everything in, in this world. And of course, it's going to be very accurate to that world. and It's going to have a reference to the Thwomps. So to all the Thwomps out there, here's your little reference. Mario finally remembers that Daniela exists so he just has to split off from Luigi to go save her and there's a very exciting action sequence where you know he's trying to be very subtle and sneaky on this on this Goomba creature that's having a drawing like he's coloring with crayons for some reason he's drawing a dinosaur but one of the other women that was captured by all these people decided to scream out that Mario is up there and kind of revealing that his he was hiding above in the rafters so we get a fun little action sequence with that and we also get to see that Fiona Shaw's character who stole the crystal was actually arrested by some other Goombas and now King Koopa finally has his hands on the crystal and we get to see what his master plan is for the world of our planet Earth and his plan is essentially to bring his army up there which again this is very much like Quantumania and very much like Tron Legacy but once he gets up there he wants to bring a portable version of his de-evolution gun and he wants to shoot the humans and turn them into monkeys. Give me that Devo gun! <laughs> I'm
And as King Koopa is getting ready to enact his big plan, we get to see Mario helping all the women escape by getting on this mattress and riding down this pipe, which is probably a reference to all the pipes that Mario goes on inside of the video games. And even though you never get to see inside of the pipe in the video games, you get to see inside of the pipe in the video game. It's basically Mario riding on a mattress. So if you didn't know that that was what's happening whenever you go on a pipe in Mario, this is what's happening every single time you go on a pipe. Guarantee this is exactly what it's like. Okay, we have finally gotten to the final fights of this movie. We have Mario and Luigi against King Koopa and all his goons. And, you know, we have to have some sort of payoff to Luigi saying that he needs to trust all the fungus. And so he tells Mario to trust the fungus. And we get the very climactic way of how he is going to use that knowledge to trust the fungus. And he basically just uses it as a rope to swing from one thing to another to get to Bowser. And, and that was our that was our climactic reveal of it. But this fight goes on for a little while. It gets very outlandish and ridiculous. Fiona Shaw makes a dive to get the crystal when it is dropped. And she gets her hands on it at the expense of her getting shocked and just almost mutilated by this fall that she takes. But she takes that crystal and runs off to try to connect it with the, with the actual meteorite piece. Which she doesn't know that it will actually kill her as she tries to do that. Which we actually get to see a very brutal death scene. <laughs> Meanwhile, Mario is still pretending to have the crystal, even though he doesn't actually have the crystal. And King Koopa is after him to try to get that crystal. And we finally get to see what Mario is going to do with the little bob bomb. So he, he winds it up, he places it on the ground, and the bob bomb slowly starts to walk towards towards King Koopa. And he's just kind of staring at it, and the bomb falls off a little ledge, and then we don't really know where the bomb went. And then we get to see what happens later on with it. But that is when Fiona Shaw connects the little thing, and the worlds start merging. The two parallel universes start merging in a very Thanos type way because they turn into dust and they disappear and they transform themselves into our world and this is where I mentioned the, the Twin Towers earlier in this review and we get to see exactly what happens to the Twin Towers which is definitely a good thing to have in a movie. What is Luigi and Daisy are still doing their thing and they decide to go over to the meteorite to get all the other human characters that were captured by the Koopas and they get them through the portal back to their world and they decide to try to get out this little meteorite piece and they finally get it out bringing back everybody who transported to our real world back to the Koopa world so Mario and Bowser or, or King Koopa are now back in this main world and the bob -omb is still trying to move it's still slowly walking to its destination while Mario and King Koopa have their last little battle between each other and of course we're going to have a moment where the bob -omb starts walking up closer and closer and they're going to keep on fighting and the bob -omb finally reaches to the feet of King Koopa and he blows up and King Koopa is taken out by the bob -omb. He flies up in the air and he starts to slowly transform because I think he was hit by the de-evolution gun or something. I don't honestly I kind of pass out at this point of this movie just dying of just a sensory overload of how insane this ending was but essentially he's being warped back into a dinosaur into a T-Rex which again this movie came out a month before Jurassic Park did. Look at these effects a month before Jurassic Park. And thankfully, thankfully this movie finally ends at this point. Bowser or King Koopa, whatever in the world you want to call him, he's finally taken out gloriously by the way. We get a return of that musical score that I mentioned earlier on. <laughs> This music plays probably like 15 times in this movie. So you can really tell Alan Silvestri just made like a couple lines of music and just took his paycheck, let them loop it a few times in this movie and just left with his money, which you know what? Good for you, Alan Silvestri. You've done some great things. You should have been nominated for the score for Avengers Endgame, even though I know a lot of it wasn't original for that movie and it was actually taken from Captain America, the first Avenger, but that's neither here nor there. You are a great composer and your work was very much used in this movie. Daisy's dad creature decides to warp back and turn back into a human because Bowser dies in this movie and so I don't really know what the logic is there but that happens and Daisy decides to stay behind in this Mushroom Kingdom world to get to know her dad and get to know this world and try to help it heal and go back to a glorious state that they used to be apparently and so she decides to stay behind. Mario and Luigi go back to their world and we cut to three weeks later. We have Mario and Luigi. They're still hanging out doing their thing and Daisy shows up in a very Back to the Future type of way. Again, this movie has a lot of Back to the Future vibes where Daisy shows up in this new different outfit. She has a gun and she's ready for battle. She says, you guys need to come with me for another adventure and they get all excited and it sets up for a sequel at the end of this movie which we're definitely definitely going to get a sequel to this movie and you know this movie came out uh, quite a while ago I think in 1993 which again I'm kind of breaking the illusion this is an April Fool's video if you guys have not been able to tell at this point but there's actually a post credit scene in this movie coming out in 1993 and in the credits is something that is probably extremely racist which you know it's a, it's a product of its time you know it's 
it's, yeah, it's not good. <laughs> and to finally wrap up this review, which has been way too long talking about this, this movie, which just needs to, I'm never watching this movie again, but in the credits, there's one last funny thing that I noticed. And, and you know, a lot of movies say like, oh, it's, it's like boy one, boy two, boy three, or like in John Wick, it's like assassin one, assassin two, assassin three. Well, you have all the Goombas in the credits of this movie. And it just says Goomba, 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 not one, two, three, four, five. It just says Goomba, 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 and then none, 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 none for all the nuns, which is just... God, this movie is complete and utter garbage. Thanks, guys, for watching this video on the Super Mario Brothers movie from 1993. I had no fun watching the movie, but I had a little bit of fun making this review. So if you enjoyed this video, definitely give this video a like and comment down below if you've ever actually watched this thing or if this is your first kind of interaction with actually watching any sequences from this film because it is very, very rough and it is a nightmare to watch. And again, I mentioned it earlier in the review, about an hour in, I was like, God, this movie is, it feels so long. I felt like four hours has passed by when I was watching this film and it was just, it was a miserable experience, but I did it for your guys and your guys' entertainment. I'm very, very excited to see the Mario movie. Like I said, the casting decisions are a little bit iffy, but I'm still excited to see the movie because it looks very accurate to the video game. I love the animation style of the actual movie that we will be getting later on this week. So I'm very excited to talk about it for real. So if you enjoyed this very long-winded review of the Super Mario Brothers movie, definitely leave a like, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel if you want to see more reviews just like this one. Like I said, I'll have Mario out in a little bit here. I had a review out for John Wick Chapter 4, which I absolutely loved that movie. It's probably my favorite movie of the year so far. And of course, I'm doing weekly reviews for The Mandalorian, which you can definitely also check those reviews out on my channel right now. So thanks everybody for watching this video, and I hope to see you all in my next one. Mm -hmm.